All right, Fabian. Hey, how you doing? Fabian, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Um, well, I grew up kind of all over LA County, um, San Pedro, which is where I was born at, but uh, kind of all over, really. I grew up in foster care, actually. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so bouncing around every six months, pretty much. Why did your parents lose you? There was too many of us. I mean, they didn't really lose us. They couldn't, they couldn't manage, you know? So 10 of us is a lot to handle for just one person. So that was, uh, that was a bit much, I guess. So they took us into the system when I was three. How so, was your experience in the foster system? It wasn't the worst. I mean, I've heard people have it bad. I mean, you can always have it worse, but I had it, I guess, mediocre. You know, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the worst. Did you feel loved as a kid? Um, somewhat. Maybe as an adult, but not so much as a kid. No. Yeah. yeah. How far did you go to school? Um, I went all the way to, like, vocational college, graduated high school, vocational college, got a trade, and went straight to work. What kind of work do you do? Well, then I was doing security. I was fully certified and uh, did that for about five years. And then uh, and that's when stuff started going downhill. You know, started making money, started getting the hang of things, getting my own place. And I mean, things was going good. Well, I'm a twin, so my twin brother used my name. And I mean, unfortunately, I didn't believe him when he said it. But uh, I ended up losing my job because of that. We ended up homeless for like cool little, you know, cool couple of years until we both started bouncing back on our own feet. But I think that's... For me, when I realized, uh, you know, there was a lot, of, a lot of stuff I could have did differently. You know, growing up, I didn't really think that I had to save much. You know, I was just always spending whatever I got. I was spending because I didn't need it. You know, for very long I would get it, and then it was gone. Get it, and then it was gone. So that's kind of the characteristics. I continued, you know, continued living, growing, working just for the next check. You never learned how to save money. Yeah, I never really learned how to save money because I didn't really, you know, didn't think about it as much. And you said your brother was. My twin brother, yeah, he's he uh, using your name. Well, he used my name to get a, and he got a ticket in my name, and that's how I lost my job because I had licenses from the state. So Sacramento sent it back, and I always renew my stuff late, so I didn't think there was gonna be a problem when they sent it back. I only had ten days to contest it, so I ended up losing my job because of that because I couldn't renew it, and uh, yeah, pretty much went downhill from there for about a couple of years, three years, and then uh, and then I started getting you know getting back in the workforce, getting back you know on my feet, but. Um, it's kind of hard when you don't have support, you know? How, how old are you now? Uh, 32. 32? Yeah. And you, uh, you like to frequent, uh, Figueroa Street? Oh yeah, I go down there. I go down there like, what, once a week if I can, three times a week if I really have the money, but at least once a week just to check out, you know, see what the different menu is, just see what the stiff, stiff stuff going on down there. When I can't afford it, I, you know, kind of skip around there a little bit, but I kind of got the regulars that I hit up every now and then, you know, they take care of me, I take care of them, it works out, you know? Are, are drugs a part of your life? Um, somewhat. I mean, it's not really a major factor. I mean, if they do it, I'll get it for them. But whatever makes it more comfortable, you know? Whatever makes it more comfortable. Because uh, drugs for me, it's not really a mandatory thing. It's just something that goes with the lifestyle. Right. So I don't have to do them, but it just makes everything run smoother when you do. How many years have you been going down to Fig t to oh, meet girls? I say about, it started when I was about 20, about 23. 23, so 23, about almost nine years. You're a veteran now. <laughs> a veteran, yeah. You probably have some fun stories. Well, man, I can, I can only I can only tell you a couple of them, but uh, yeah, I have a. As I as I as I kept going down, I got better at it, and it became something that I didn't really have to try to do anymore. It was like something that just came naturally. Going down there was just like, for me, it was like another day. You know. What What are the things that uh, a rookie would need to know about? Picking just, up girls on Figaro Street. Just be yourself. You know, half the time if they like you, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna come with you regardless of whether whether you got the money or not. They just sometimes if you got, you know, got what they want, they got what you want. If it doesn't matter how much you're willing to pay them or how much they're willing to do, just getting them comfortable is what the main part is. You gotta but, get them comfortable. But from what it sounds like, what, what I've heard from some of the girls is that like whatever price you negotiate on the on the street is not necessarily the price you're going to pay in the No, end. no, not at all because it always goes up. Sometimes it, <laughs> does, you know, it never really goes down, but most of the time you end up paying more than you intended, but you know, that's a part of the life. And are, are pimps a part of the I've had a couple I've had a couple of run-ins with them and um cuz you know, girls naturally they like to flock to to me and I'm not trying to be um I'm not trying to be on that other end, but I mean I can't say that I haven't done it, but I just it wasn't for me. I just I like to pick them up. I don't like to manage them. You know, sometimes they get a little wild, and I have to uh, have to shut it all down and disappear for a couple of weeks. You ever uh, had girls try to rob you or anything like that? Oh yeah, I've been robbed. I've been robbed a couple of times. But uh, I mean, robbed you know, 
like just literally caught with their pants down you know half of them they're 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 quick they're slick so it's like once they get me comfortable and i'm thinking that they're comfortable and everything's going good it like that like a twist and before i know it i'm either running out the door or i'm or i'm waking up like i don't think i drank that much but i you know i do drink but I, i'm not a big drinker so i know something went wrong you know in the initial setup where i wasn't paying attention and i drank too much and or maybe i drank something i shouldn't have but uh maybe sometimes i get too comfortable you know does the relationship that you'll have with a, with a girl that you pick up and you drop off after half an hour satisfy you as much as like a, a, a real uh, relationship would? A real relationship for me is like, it's it's something I can't get right now because those are my relationships. With these girls, it's like, I don't just see them, you know, every once in a while, but I see them like friends that I get to know. And, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes some of the girls, I'm not gonna lie, I've had a couple of where I didn't even have sex with them. It was just the connection, the initial connection that I had with them. I felt like they understood me for some reason. I don't know why, but some of them, you know, I don't even have, I have I had sex with a lot of them, but some of them, I can't say that I did because- A lot of them are very nice women. Yeah, they're, they're actually good people. It's like, once you get to know them, you sit down with them, it's like, they're just like you, you know, just trying to, just trying to get it, just trying to make it just the best way they can and know how, you know? And, you know, I can relate to that, you know, growing up being, you know, by myself, I didn't meet my twin until I was like 11. So being by myself, trying to figure it out, it was my way of, you know, making it. And some of those girls I can relate to, it's just like, it's like a story of my life and they're telling it, but on the other side of it, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's been quite a journey. Have you ever developed feelings for any of these girls? Oh yeah, yeah, when they put it on me, yeah, sometimes it's <laughs> it's right away, it's, it's, it's hard not to, it's hard not to, because you know, they are pretty, they are beautiful, and, you know, it's not like they can't go get someone else, but it's like when they're right there with you that you feel like like you're the man, you know, until until it's over. But, you know, it's always got to come to an end. It's not going to be like they're going to be there all the time. No, they they come and go. Sometimes they tend to stay a little longer than I expected or I, sometimes I initially wanted, but it all it all works itself out. You know? Have they, you had long-term relationships with women that are not working the streets? Um, no, never, no, no, not, not too long. Maybe, uh, the longest one I had was about three years mm -hmm. and, uh, that turned out to be a, a, a lie entirely. I turned out to be, she was working the whole time and I had no clue. I was so busy with my shit and she was busy with her shit. We never crossed paths out there, but I kind of heard things. She kind of heard things and it wasn't until like three years down the line and we were just looking at each other. I'm miserable. She's miserable. She knows what it is now. And she, I'm starting to realize what it is, and we just both don't want to tell each other the truth, and we're just hiding from each other, just making it worse, dragging it out, and uh, I, I'll never do that again. Honest, <laughs> honesty is the yeah, I never do that again. Some, it's like important. everybody pays for it somehow, whether you want to see it that way or not. We all we all trick on something, whether it's you're giving up money, your time, something is being given for something in exchange, and it's like anybody that says that they haven't tricked on anything in their entire life would probably be probably be lying. Because <laughs> everybody pays somehow for something, you know, that they want. You know. Do Do you think the the childhood you had somehow made you fearful of committed relationships? Um, yeah, kind of because every everything for me was like never guaranteed. It was always switching up and changing. So it's like that's kind of the mentality I developed growing up. When I see something I like, I know it's not going to be around forever, and I know I'm not going to be able to keep it there forever. So I just enjoy it, enjoy it the best I can while I got it and just live it up, you know? And hopefully that keeps them around and makes it stick, but I know it's not gonna last. It's always what, gotta come to an end. What, do you think you've learned anything about women from, from this? Oh yeah, I learned a lot about women. I learned- group of uh, women that you're, you're interacting with? I learned just cause women, you know, are the bringers of life don't mean they bring about the most life. You know what I mean? So it's like women, you know, women are nice, but they don't bring the most life. They think they do, but we, if you put, if you put a bunch of men on an island, and then you put a bunch of women on an island, and then you put one guy, and then you put one girl, women can't repopulate without us. You know, you put one girl on an, an island of men, and we can repopulate, you know, so we bring more life than they do real, realistically, but the way they see it is different. They see it as their top dog, so. And as long as you keep them thinking that, and, 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 and you make sure that they know that, then you don't gotta worry about nothing. <laughs> you know, and that's the way I kept it. And, you know, just gotta be humble, and you have to be respectful. For the most part, they're all respectful, but 
they can't get out of line. You know, sometimes they they just kind of throw a curveball at you at the end of it all. It's like you don't give them enough money or you didn't have an, what they were expecting. Or sometimes they're just thinking like it's going to be an easy peasy win. And sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm really hard. You know, sometimes I can't get it and I have to go back out and get a different girl. And it's just it didn't work out that I had it in my budget to do that. But I end up doing it anyways because it's like I'm not going to waste my time and waste my money and not get my, you know, not get it. But Figaro Street's an interesting yeah, little environment, isn't it? Yeah, they do. They uh, they kind of they kind of do a little bit of everything out there. It's like sometimes I want to go in it at a certain way, and then I come out of it like, damn, what was I thinking? And it, because of my way I entered it, it just throws my whole you know mood off. If I'm not in the mood, and even though I'll get the room, I'll get the girl, have it all ready, set, pop, boom, boom. And something as simple as like the girl I'm dating will call me and mess it all up. You know, just throw my whole head out the window, and I'm like, why am I thinking about that when I when I got what I want right here? You know. And she's not thinking about me when she's out doing what she's doing, but it's kind of hard when you're like trying to make a relationship work and you're trying to do this at the same time and trying to hide it all from each other. It's just uh, it's a lot. Would you describe yourself as happy with this arrangement that you've found? Um, yeah, for the most part, I mean, I'm not, I'm not unhappy. I was unhappy, you know, when I didn't. I guess when I didn't accept it, you know, when I didn't accept that that's that's me. You know, I can't change that. You know, I've been doing that for what nine years now and to change it now would be like start, start, starting to live a lie you know it, it, it'd be hard to find a girl on this you know a regular that's okay with that yeah a regular yeah. square girl well yeah and so, then expect her to be putting out within minutes of oh yeah meeting. yeah no there's a there's the, there's a time limit so most of them they don't put out i guess it's three months and six months i would be damn like any girl that i've ever hooked up with it was like the first night you know and then if she decided to try to be a girlfriend type for me then I allowed it, but if it wasn't getting down the first or second night, I pretty much didn't really go for it. <laughs> That's what I've been used to. So it's like anything outside of that, it's just like it could be all the way good for me and be the best situation, and I'll find a way to fuck it up. You know, That's just me. If I'm not getting initial, you know, I guess they call it uh, instant satisfaction with that, then it's not going to work for me because that's what I'm used to getting. You know? do, you, do you think prostitution should be legalized? I think that it should because I mean if if it's something that you own, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to to use it how you please. You know, everybody has their own way of doing things, and that's just one of them. And people make money like that, so it's like, what better to have to sell that you always own? You know, that would be the best thing to sell, but it's illegal, I guess. And you have regulars that you'll go to sometimes? Yeah, yeah, I have a bunch. I have like a I have like three or four regulars that I hit up periodically, but um. I don't know. They're just they're dwindling down. You know, every now and then I'll lose one. You know, but I always like to make sure I have at least three. You know, that way I don't have to hit the same one every up every week or just you know I like to change it up every now and then get a little bit of variety. And the most I've ever done in one week was like five. But that's when I was that's when I was working a lot more. I was you ever been lot. arrested? Not for that. No, no. But um, I've I've been there when it's when when people have gotten arrested, but. For some reason, I just like I get lucky and I, I don't end up going in the back of the car and they just let me go. They always what, take the girls most of the time. What about diseases? Um, no, no, I haven't gotten that unlucky, but um, I came close. I came close one time. It was just like if condom broke, I didn't go to the doctor the next day to get the pill. I was worried, you know, because I'm just, you know, sometimes I'm I'm a bit rough. So it's like anything wrong down there and I see it, I know I'm not going to be able to have sex for a long time and I don't want that. So it's like I got to really watch out for that area, but... Sometimes it's, sometimes it looks good and don't be good. And I gotta be, you know, choosy with what I do because I don't wanna mess anything up. Like sometimes they're like real anal about the condom thing and I am now, but initially I wasn't because I didn't see the point in it. I was like, we're having fun, what's the problem? But as it went on and I started to see that, you know, it, it could be, it could, it could take things out of control if you don't watch it, then I started to understand what they meant. Half the time I was, uh, being ignorant, I just wanted to get what I wanted, and that was it. <laughs> and drugs are part of the experience when you're doing this? Yeah, I'm always e either high or, uh, you know, under the influence of something. Is that know? crystal meth usually? Um, crystal, sometimes weed, most of the time weed and alcohol, but it could be, you know, mixed up like pills I've been doing lately, like e-pills and molly was a big thing for me about two years ago. But, uh, yeah, I try to, um, I try to, you know, re reduce the amount that I take in as far as drug-wise because I don't want to get addicted to that. My addiction is women. My addiction is, is known to me. That's my addiction. Anything else outside of that is, like, it's something I consume or I do, but it doesn't have to be, you know? 
my addiction is uh my addiction is women, I guess. That's my biggest addiction. Different. And Fabian, right. what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Um, never settle, you know, just um just always go for you know, always go for what you want, whether it's something like this or something, you know, something else greater, just as long as you set yourself a boundary and you don't cross it, then you really don't got really much to worry about. It's just just like everybody else, I guess. What they do, what you do in the shadows is no one else's concern, you know. But uh, yeah, I guess that's my biggest thing. Uh, just never settle. Yeah. All right, Fabian. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I appreciate it, Mark. Thank you. Have fun this weekend. I will. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks.